Hello YouTube, Flight Some Guy here. I am in Kingston, Jamaica. And not going anywhere this time. I'm with my new Fly the Mad Dog uh, MD-80. And in this series of videos, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of the aircraft systems based on the documentation that came with the aircraft and break it down into small videos so that you don't have to read the manual. I apologize for my voice. I had a bad sinus infection this past week. That's why I haven't been able to do any videos. And believe it or not, I'm getting a lot better. I don't sound like it, but I am getting better. Um, I'm in Kingston here. We got that scenery going. Got all these other guys walking around. Looks pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so uh, before we go into the aircraft, I got to tell you, I love T-tail aircraft. They're my favorite aircraft, and the MD-80 is my favorite T-tail. Uh, the ERJ series the Slowpoke CRJ series, the DC-9, the uh, uh, MD-80, MD-88, uh, the Boeing 717, all the Learjets. I'm not sure why, I just love T-tail aircraft. I think they're a lot more fun to fly, they have a lot more uh, flair and uh, pizzazz, a lot more character than the normal under the wing uh, engine under the wing aircraft. Not sure why, but I absolutely love uh, T-tail aircraft. And since I love the MD-80 so much, I've decided I would do these uh, Learn the Mad Dog videos. Wow, my voice sounds horrible. All right, let's go ahead and get inside. Today, what I'm going to do is take a few moments and go over the overhead panel. All right, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in each of the individual systems. That's what the subsequent videos are for. I want this to be a summarization or a big picture of all the systems on the overhead panel and in subsequent videos I'll go into each individual system in greater detail. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and get some juice to the aircraft. Alright, so the parking brake is set. I need to go to the upper overhead. I need to turn on the ground power unit. So what you do is, first Turn on the battery master. Next, go to the upper overhead and in your audio control panel, click on intercom and push that in. And then I can right click here and say, Sir, connect the GPU, please. Stand by, connect. And when it says GPU connected, this little thing comes on external power do that and it says your external power is available Autopilot. okay all right so we have juice coming to the aircraft we're not going anywhere but I figured it would make more sense to do this presentation with power to the aircraft all right so let's talk about the overhead panel it looks like a big mishmash of buttons and switches and dials that don't make any sense, right? Well, compared to the overhead panels of, say, the ERJ or the E-Jets or the Airbus, yeah, this looks like a, a, an absolute disaster. But the truth of the fact is a lot of time and effort went into the design of this overhead panel. Now, as you can see, a lot of the switches and buttons look different from each other, okay? Here you have the emergency powers, this big old switch in the middle. Here you got the uh, fuel boost switches, which looks different from the start pump switch, which looks different from the emergency light, which looks different from the pito heat switches, which is different from the start switches, and so on and so forth. The design philosophy behind this is very, very simple. When you're flying along and you got one hand on the yoke, you want to maintain visual situational awareness looking outside the plane. You float this aircraft long enough, you'll know what switch your 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 hand is grabbed based on the size you know the size of the switch and how it's shaped that's the reason why they did this this way that way you can reach for the switch that you want without actually having to look at the overhead panel with the ERJs the Airbuses and the E-Jets all the switches and the buttons are exactly the same and it takes more muscle memories to learn what your what button you're pushing with those aircraft as opposed to this all right let's go ahead and get started real quick we will start with the upper overhead panel. Now, like I said, this is just going to be a big picture. I'm not going to go into the detail systems this time around. All right. 
here is where you fire up your ground power unit all right this is your audio control panel there's only one set of mics and one set of speakers uh, or one set of headsets for the pilot and co-pilot but there's a bunch of different systems that they need to speak through this connects their headsets and microphones to the various systems these are your cargo fire detection and suppression systems over here here as you can see you uh, in the real plane you call the outside people by pressing this button here you right click it brings up this menu yes sir never mind all right coming down here these are a set of circuit breakers okay everybody knows what circuit breakers are and these are actually modeled right click that pulls or opens the circuit for the FMS GPS left click closes it and if you want you can go through and verify that these circuit breakers actually work for the various systems that they're assigned to now there are other circuit breakers in the aircraft but I don't think these are modeled But I think they prove their point, the fact that they model these. Uh, um, truth of the fact is modeling circuit breakers is you know, <laughs> going a little bit too far in my opinion. It just goes to show the dedication of the developer to making a, a thorough study sim. All right, moving down. These switches have to do with uh, computers that send information to the, uh, the flight guidance uh, computer system. All right, Just know that they need to be in the 12 o'clock position. This one here aligns your INS for navigation using the FMC. Once this system gets electricity, it starts the aligning process. It takes about five to seven minutes. And during that time, the aircraft should not be moving and should not be shaking. So a lot of times you don't want to do this while you're boarding. And the alignment process is complete once all the errors in these systems go away. Some simulators allow you to... Uh, modify how long it aligns some you can do it instantly and whatnot this is your cockpit voice recorder these systems over here just know that they need to be in the 12 o'clock position this tells you which FMS which EFIS you're using and which radio nav system you're using this is your engine sync it can synchronize the engines for uh, sound pleasure purposes based on EPR N1 or N2 this is your cockpit uh, flight uh, cockpit data recorder you go ahead and set the date and time and whatnot and I guess it timestamps the uh, the data recorder with that information all right coming down this portion of the overhead panel manages the electricity that's being provided to the aircraft there's several sources you can get juice from the batteries you can get juice from the ground power unit which is what we have right now you can also get juice from the APU this button right here allows you to check the frequency voltage and uh, current from the various systems all right in this case external power here you can see we have uh, about 120 volts here's a frequency and here you can see your amps you can come over here check how much uh, amps and how much volts you're getting from your battery you can also check how much juice you're getting from the APU and whatnot. All right, moving down on the left side, we have the start pump. This start pump is a fuel pump to get the APU going. If you want to start the APU, you got to turn this pump on. This button here is for your engine igniters. You got to make sure this is on either SysA or SysB or both when you're about to start your engines. These are your fuel heat switches very important if you're flying in icing conditions here are your start switches for the engines these are spring loaded this is a pneumatic pressure uh, gauge it tells you what the pressure is make sure you have enough uh, bleed air to, to get the uh, turbines uh, turning so you can start your engines emergency lights everybody knows what that is this arms all turns it on and off no smoking seat belt. These are your ice protection systems. Okay. These are your fuel boost pumps. Aft, left, right, and center. Forward, left, right, and center. This is the controls for your APU. This puts out the fire if there is a fire. This turns on the bleed air. This controls your APU door. This is the APU master on, off, and run switch. 
and here's the battery master as you can see you can uh, turn it on and off but once it's on you can also twist it to make sure it stays in the on position and I suppose you can run the APU economical or normal moving up further these are your gauges for your APU once you start them up these gauges turn on we already went over the uh, these are your volts uh, dials so you can check to see how much volts and current and frequency is running through the electrical systems flight data recorder these are your flat lamps turn this on flight attendant call okay this turns on and off and arms your anti-skid anti-skid is just anti-lock brakes for planes down here we have the air conditioning system you can control the temperature of the cabin and the cockpit with these knobs you can also turn on and off the air conditioning system uh, like many other systems in modern aircraft this is a set it and forget it you just go ahead and set it auto and it go ahead and does its thing this is the pressurization panel again set it and forget it um, aircraft in North America for the most part they uh, pressurize the cabin and the cockpit to 8,000 feet flight above 10,000 feet this is the takeoff and landing pressurization system. If you're landing at an airport that's really, really high above surface elevation, say in Mexico City or wherever, Colorado, you need to set this. Otherwise, once you land and you don't set this, the door is going to do a big number on you once you open it. So you set this to the altitude of the airport you're landing at and you set the landing barometric pressure here. Okay, here's you got your flight deck door. You can go ahead and unlock it. It's left on auto. You can lock people out. These are your wipers. Turn on the wipers here. Wow, those move real fast. And that's on slow. <laughs> okay, off. Let's go ahead and park the uh, blades. Okay, what else we got? More pressurization stuff. Here you can test all your lights. Every single light in the cockpit came on. Here you have your air conditioning auto shut off. You got your auto and you got override. Your ram on and off. Venturi fan. All this does is turn on a fan to keep some avionics under the uh, cockpit cool. Up here, over here, we have some warning systems. Stall warning. Overspeed warning. Here you have your logo lights. Here you have your, your ICE FOD. FOD stands for Foreign Object Debris. And that turned on a light down here in the Annunciation panel. And what it does is it just lets you know that there's ice building up in the engines. Yaw damper, that's for passenger comfort, so the tail don't go all over the place. You can turn it on, off, override here. Mac trim, comp, norm, override. Your logo lights are up here, but your other external lights are down here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they did that. And here you have your GPS, your ground proximity warning system. Flight slow. Pull up. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. That was a test. And here you can do your wind shear test. Headwind. Shear. Headwind. Shear. Headwind. Shear. Tailwind. Shear. Tailwind. Shear. Tailwind. Shear. But you just leave these in norm. They, you know, set it and forget it. And here you have your uh, cockpit breaker and standby. I guess these are just some other lights. Cockpit flood. That's good. I'm needing some extra lighting. Thunderstorm light on off. No big deal there. And I want to say that's all of the systems for the overhead panel. Uh, one more thing is your uh, annunciation panel. Here's where you have all your uh, warning uh, lights with regards to um, 
what systems that's your electrical system that's your ice engine uh, flight controls miscellaneous hydraulics and some doors and yeah, some more lights over here so that's what that is and I think that's it that covers all the uh, primary systems for the overhead panel for the MD-80 or in this case the MD-82 in subsequent videos I'll go ahead and do uh, I'll go ahead and do one on the electrical system I'll go ahead and do one on the communication system I'll go ahead and do one on the APU and uh, the fuel system and whatnot and that's all I have uh, thank you very much for watching my first video in my learn the mad dog series hope you found this video useful have a nice day and I'll see you next time.